you're going back to an old club, albeit you weren't there for, for too long at Carrow Road, but when you do go back to the clubs that you represented, like like going back to Norwich, what's it like playing against an old team or old teammates? Uh, yeah, it depends sort of, you know, how you've how you left the club really or how you, you know how you did when you were at the club and um, you know my time at Norwich I was only there three months on loan for Aston Villa but we managed to to win the championship then and obviously I was a, a lot younger then and um, you know I've got the medal at home um, so it was, they were great times you know winning there and we were winning games every week and then yeah, finally managed to, to win the league so uh, they were happy times so you know I'm always going to enjoy going back there and um, of course I'm uh, you know, I've played for for a few clubs, so it's happened quite a, quite a couple, you know, a few times this season. So I'm I'm used to it by now. You seem to be one of those lads, though, that people would welcome back. I mean, I, I just from memory, there's there's nowhere that you know I kind of think, well, they wouldn't like him there. No, there's not too many. No, I've always seemed to have left, um, you know, in on good terms and had a lot of friends at the clubs I played for. So uh, Norwich being one of them, it's a it's a very you know family orientated club. They make my family feel very welcome when I was down there. Um, and I've still got some friends there, so um, yeah, it'd be nice to go back there, but um, you know, I still won't feel guilty if we take for three points. 86 goals you've scored in the Premier League so far. I mean, you've scored many, many more in, in league mm. and, and FA Cup games. Can you talk us through perhaps your most memorable goal of all time? We've all got our own ideas of what one it is, <laughs> but can you talk us through it? Um, yeah, probably, you know, the goal against Man City I scored for Stoke would, would definitely be up there. Um, uh, probably the, the third goal, a hat trick I scored for Liverpool against Arsenal. That would that w that was one of my favourites, and um, probably a couple in the Champions League. Uh, probably the one against Galatasaray in the, in the Champions League. Um, that was up there, and uh, I scored a winner for um, in the Community Shield as well against Chelsea. That was uh, another special day for me. Can you talk us through the the Manchester City goal, um, the goal against Manchester City, and also the the final goal of, that gave you the hat trick against Liverpool? Yeah, um, well, obviously the 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 goal for Stoke against Man City would would definitely be up there. I think. Um, well, I remember. I think it was Pennant for some reason managed to win a header, and uh, you know, just pop, popped up to me, and I, I, I popped it up because I've always liked volleying and um, just tried my luck really. And uh, yeah, to see it flying was a was a great moment. Obviously, probably the best goal I scored in my in my career. Um, so that that was fantastic. And then the Arsenal goal was. Um, I remember obviously. Uh, having scored two goals in the first half, you know, as will I, will I, won't I get the hat trick? And um, I remember the ball coming over and just, you know, sort of taking it on the side side of my foot. Uh, I think it was William Gallas and, and Torre were both in the middle. Obviously, I've then done a Cruyff and then hit it with my left foot in the in the corner. So that was that was a great moment. And obviously, special to get a Premier League hat trick as well. There's so few people that can mm. say I done mm. a Cruyff. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you've made more appearances now for Stoke than you have for any of yeah. your previous clubs. Do you see yourself playing out mm. your career here? I, I really enjoy it. I mean, you never say never. You know, I've, I've been around um, too long to, to say you know I'm going to spend the rest of my life here because you just never know. But I'm more than happy here. I'm very very happy playing for the club. I think it's moving in the right direction. I enjoy playing for the manager, um, and um, you know I, I genuinely believe that we're um, you know we're gonna we're gonna do well certainly in the in, you know in the, in the future. I think this season's maybe a bit of a transitional period, but. Um, Next year, I think we can can really kick on and, and start, um, you know, putting our stamp on the, on the on the Premier League. Brilliant. Moving on, just a question about England, if that's okay. What advice would you give to someone like Luke Shaw, and Ross Barkley, young players, on making the transition from the under twenty one mm. setup up to the full England squad? Well, uh, you know, first and foremost, they look like you know real real good players. You know, very good players, and uh, obviously they. You know, Lallana haven't, haven't been a cap captain at Southampton for a while now, so I'm sure he's got a you know, he's got a lot of responsibility and a, probably a, an old head on young shoulders really. And and Shaw looks like a fantastic prospect as well. So um, if anything, is just to go and enjoy it. Obviously, you know, playing for England is the pinnacle of anyone's career, and you never know um, you know when that's going to be cut short. So um, you've got to take you know enjoy every single moment of it. And I think uh, you know if they both go to the World Cup, then um, you know it's just to it's to sort of Make sure you remember all the, the good parts of it because it's, uh, it's certainly the pinnacle of, of my career playing in, in the World Cups that I did. Fabulous. Um, who of the England players that were added to the squad this season have perhaps impressed you the most? Um, like the players who've been, been added, I think, um, I think Adam Lallana's definitely um, been one of them. I think uh, not just on last night's performance, I think in, you know, in his Premier League performances, he's, been, uh, he's certainly been someone who's, who's caught my eye, I'd say. Um, I'd say him, yeah, without doubt, yeah. 
Yeah, he's just slotted in mm. as if he's been there forever, hasn't yeah. he? Um, what's the number one highlight for you as a footballer? And what's the secret to maintaining such a long career in the world's greatest football league? Um, I don't know. I think, um, obviously, you know, I've, I've enjoyed every moment of playing in the Premier League. It's, uh, for me, it's the best league in the world. And, um, you know, you, you never know what's around the corner. So, so every, every year, just try and, try and do your best, um, you know, try and have a good pre-season and um, you know, put in as, as much work as you can pre-season and, and, and try and uh, you know, stay around for as long as I can because, uh, you know, it's the, for me, it's the best job in the world. I enjoy coming in every day and, and playing, so uh, you know, long may that continue. When you started out as a kid, no one bothered with things like yoga and longevity. Mm. I'm not saying you were down the pub when you shouldn't mm. have been, but it, it was diff You know, you were a kid probably watching some of those older pros yeah. doing stuff. Have you taken stuff into your game like mm. the yoga, mm. the sports science mm. and all that, which I imagine was very different mm. from when you started out? Yeah, when I first started out, obviously we didn't have, uh, you know, like you say, a lot of the sports science, you know, dietitians coming in. Um, you know, people who obviously warm downs, things like that. You know, as soon as we finished the game, that was it. We're in the shower, we're out. You know, and you know these days, obviously, we jog around the pitch, we stretch. Uh, we come in the next day um, a lot of the times to to warm down and make sure our um, you know muscles are, are, are obviously um, you know as as, as quickly recovered as they can be. So um, certainly, I think these days, I think players are going to play longer. I think um, the only flip side to that is that it's probably a lot more demanding than when I first started. You know, the games the the, the amount of games we play now and the intensity we play them at is getting harder and harder each se each season. I think so. Uh, yeah, it's it's important to recover, and I think um, and like you say, well, the, the the team that the the club have got now is in place so that we can um, you know to help maintain us for for as long as possible. Okay, right, Muniesa, if that's okay, can you describe for me some of the qualities that Mark Muniesa has? Um, well, he's obviously very good on the ball. Obviously, you know, he's, he's, I think his favourite position is probably playing, you know, centre back. But um, he's got, you know, in this country, a lot of the time, obviously, it's, um, you know, it's, it's defend, head, you know, kick it anywhere, you know, and uh, and make sure you you stop the goals. But um, Mark Mignes has probably got a little bit more than that. He can play. He's good on the ball, um, but you know, obviously, he can defend as well. And that's that's what that's what you need first and foremost. But um, and he's, a, you know, he's a very good lad to have around the place as well. Now, clearly, you're sure Cross and everyone are, are cracking little players in, in themselves. Um, but do you think that perhaps because of what he's where he's come from, that he could stand out from other defenders in terms of style and technique? Um, yeah, obviously, um, you know the, the defenders we've got at the club now. Obviously, uh, you know Robert Hoof, uh, having been injured, uh, Mark Wilson's come in and done a fantastic job at centre half, and um, you know Ryan Shawcross been been up there for me with our, you know. Best few players in the last you know, three three seasons that I've been at the club, so uh, it's very difficult for for Mark Minister to break in. But um, you know, every time he has come in, he's done a, he's done a very good job in the League Cup and whenever he's been called upon. Um, and like you say, he's he's very good technically, so um, you know, he does bring something else to the to the squad. And just finally on Munier, so do you think he has what it takes to be a success in the Premier League, which you may have answered already? Mm. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think he's got you know uh, all the attributes. Um, you know. First and foremost, yeah, he has got very good technique, but um, you know he's a good defender and he's uh, he's strong enough to cope with the with the Premier League. Right, final two, I promise. Um, do you agree with Jose Mourinho, Jose Mourinho's comments that footballers are too vain? And who's the vainest in your squad that you've played with, or is it you that's in front of them? He said this week that when he was mm. at Madrid, all the players lined mm -hmm. up to yeah, stare into. Yeah. I don't know what. You know, yeah. Stare into. The, mm. This is one of my colleagues' questions, not mine. Yeah. But have you, have you encountered that footballers were a little vainer than when you started out? And uh, is there yeah. a vain lad in your squad? Um, yeah, there's. <coughs> I totally agree with Josie Mourinho. To be honest, yeah, there's hundreds of vain footballers that I've come across. Um, but yeah, we've got got a good few in our dressing room. Um, Eric Peters springs to mind. Um, you know, there's anyone who combs their hair and gels it at half time has to be brought up, surely. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Huh? Yeah. 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 Straight to Eric. Yeah. For player appearance, if you want reference for that. Yeah. yeah. Was he? Trainers on he had a pair of blue speedway looking yeah, yeah. ones last time well, I saw him. Well, he got a pair of gold trainers on with all horns, gold horns coming yeah, 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 off yeah, them. It was, yeah. I mean, if you try them when you lift them. some new ones, because I heard Matty Etting on the radio last night yeah. talking about a load of lads coming in with these spikes. Christian Louboutins. Oh, right, I'm no, too old to unbelievable. know. So it's unbelievable, honestly. You've never seen him like it. We ripped you for it. Nine Fizzling Villa supporters really had some fun with that. Yeah, yeah. 
maybe it's different over there. At hmm. Right, and finally, which team has been the toughest that you've played against this season and which player has hmm. perhaps impressed you the most? Um, I, the toughest uh, game that springs to mind for me was, was Liverpool um, at, at home. Um, just because, you know, we felt that we got back into the game, I think, at 2-2 and then they just blew, away, blew us away offensively. I think um, going forward, I think Sterling, Sturridge, um, Suarez, uh, the pace that they've got, um, you know, they really impressed me and I think, uh, you know, they've, they've come on so much in the last couple of seasons. And which of those would you say is the key player that's really... Well, yeah, Suarez, is, I think, is, is, of, is the obvious one that springs to mind, but I think Sturridge isn't far behind him. I think he's had a fantastic season. Thank you very much. Bless okay. you. No problem.